And now, Rand the Man and Dominatrix as Caesar and Ethel Jax. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and Mrs. Jax lies tense and sleepless in the dark as poor husband John, victim of raucous insomnia, or whimpers, m'lady, reaches a climax during an acute attack of his strange ailment. Let's listen. He'll stop now. I know he will. Oh, dear. Caesar, Caesar, turn on your side. Go on. Stop it. Stop it. What? Caesar. What, what? What, Ethel? What? What is it, Ethel? What's the matter? There isn't another woman in the world who'd sacrifice her youth and her looks to live with a man who rattles himself to sleep like a bag of old bones. What do you think I'm made of, Caesar? The uh, mold bones? You have got to stop it. Stop Stop what? That fucking snoring! Oh, it's just your imagination, Ethel. I never snore. Caesar Jax, how the hell can you say that? It's easy. I never snore. See how that works? I never snore. I never snore. Caesar! Caesar! <laughs> Caesar! What? 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 What's the matter? Why don't you let me sleep, Ethel? What about me? What am I to do when you're grinding around like a buzzsaw? I never sleep at all. You were fast asleep when I came home from my lodge meeting. What time did you come in? I I don't know. Put out the lights. You said you'd have one drink and get home at ten. Well, you know what the fuck? I had ten drinks and got home at one. So? You knew where I was all the time. I don't start beefing about it. Well, I didn't know where you were. Otherwise, I would have called you. For what? Because the express man come round with that package. It's from Kentucky, and there was freight charges on it. Well, why didn't you pay him? I've been waiting for that package for like three weeks. What the hell is it? It's my dividend. I belong to a bottle of the month club. You know what? I'm just sick and tired of the way your whole life is wrapped around a bottle of bourbon. Maybe you'd like me better if I wore a label and put a cork in my mouth. You don't need to wear a label, Ethel. There you go again with your subtle insults. When am I supposed to talk to you? You rush away in the morning, you come home late at night when I'm sleeping... Just sit up and talk to me, Caesar. Just e- talk Ethel, to me. Ethel, I'm dead tired. I don't know what time I came home, but I was in the kitchen for over an hour. Yeah, I heard you puttering around in there. I wasn't puttering. You asked me to fix the electric toaster and the curling iron, didn't you? Well, I fixed them both. And do they work? They, they work fine, except the toast pops up with a permanent. Oh, why does that not surprise me? Did you even turn off the lights? Turned off the lights. S- suppose you left a mess in the kitchen. No mess. Well, I hope you locked the back door. The cat got out three times last week. Cat won't get out. Where did you put him? In the birdcage. The birdcage? Where the fuck's the canary? In the cat. Caesar Jax! Please, Ethel, stop knocking yourself out. Nothing happened to the canary, and the cat's fast asleep in the oven. Jeez, don't scare me like that. Are you sure all the animals are taken care of? I'm sure. How about the fishbowl? Did you heat up the water for the baby goldfish? I heated his water, gave him his pabulum, burped him twice, and changed his diaper. Would you like me to put the lights out now so we can go back to sleep? Oh, Caesar, why do you have to be so cross and disagreeable all the time? Because I'm exhausted. That's not true. You'd rather stay out all night fucking around with your red dick friends. Why don't you just spend some time with me? Would it kill you? Oh, it doesn't kill me. It's a funny thing that... But I don't need anybody else. I'm always satisfied with being with just you. Well, you're in better company than I am. Good night, Ethel. Just keep adding insult to injury. Never a kind word or compliment. Just work me to death like a slave. Pick at my meals, complain about my cooking, complain about my hair. I never complain about your cooking, Ethel. Then why didn't you eat that pie that I made tonight? I did eat it. I ate every bit of it. What, you didn't like it? I couldn't chew it. The undercrust was like cardboard. Undercrust? Yes. That pie didn't have any undercrust. I gave it to you on a paper plate. Well, the plate tasted better than the pie. Don't make pies anymore. I hate pies. I hate fucking all dessert. Especially that orange meringue broccoli dream cake shit you fucking make. Don't make me any more desserts, Ethel. Uh, I never know what to make for you. You have got the weirdest appetite of any man alive. Yeah, sure. Weird. For two months running, you wouldn't eat anything but pig's knuckles. Pig's knuckles for fuck's sake what about it just because you wanted pig's knuckles i had to cook my fingers to the bone why didn't you just hire a chef (sighs) i cook for you i scrub for you i suck and fuck for you and do i get anything thanks thanks that's all the thanks i get no love no affection oh how i envy sherry her husband mike treats her more like a friend than a wife well settle down will you ethel no i won't settle down you think sherry ever makes breakfast for mike not that lazy lump she makes him go to work every day without a morsel of food just a kiss for breakfast would you be satisfied with that? Sure. Send her over in the morning. I mean, would you be satisfied if I gave you a kiss for breath? Ethel, I'd be satisfied with anything if you'd just let me get some rest. Answer me, Caesar. Do you want a kiss for breakfast? Yes. Well, ask for it. 
Ethel, I want a kiss for breakfast. Don't do me any favours. I'll never let you kiss me again as long as you live until you apologise. Uh, apologise? The fuck am I apologising for? It's what you haven't done. You haven't told me you love me for years. Why don't you just say you sorry that you married me? Because I'm not. Am I the only wife in the world for you? You're the only wife in the world for me. You're lying. Swear. I swear I'm lying. I mean, I'm not lying. Well, that's no way to swear. Say it nicely. You're the only wife in the world for me, Ethel. Really, Caesar? Really. I wouldn't have another wife like you for anything. I wish I'd known more about you before we were married. Oh, you knew everything. I didn't know about that tattoo you have on your stomach. That's a real indication of a man's character. I wish I'd have known that. Now wait, now, just wait a fucking minute. I had that tattoo put on my stomach when I was just a silly kid. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A hula girl with a big dimple in her chin. That dimple was there before she was. Don't go digging up my stomach at this time of night, Ethel. Well, why don't you just have that ugly picture removed? Okay, I'll have it removed in the morning. Oh, you say it, but you won't have it done. What? Have it done now. Go on, get up and get rid of that hula girl. Are you out of your mind? It's four o'clock in the fucking morning. You'd get rid of her quick enough if you were married to Gloria Gooseby. Oh, now don't start with Gloria Gooseby. She'd holler plenty if you didn't do what she liked. I always do what she likes and she never hollers. I hate the sight of Gloria Gooseby. I never want you to mention her name again. Do you hear me, Ethel? Don't yell at me. I'm sick. Sick? Dr. Hershey told me there was something the matter with my head. You don't mean to tell me you paid a fucking doctor to find that out? You make fun of me if you like, but I know that I ain't lasting long. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Are you really sick? So sick, I could die. I think I'm poisoned. I've got the most awful indigestion. Call the doctor, Caesar. Caesar, call the doctor. doctor. I'll take care of it for you. Lie still, and I'll fry you some radishes and hot sauerkraut juice. You are not frying anything. Radishes and hot sauerkraut juice? Finest cure in the world for indigestion. Lie still. Caesar Jax, I don't want any of your insane remedies. You'll treat me for indigestion and I'll probably die of liver trouble. Listen, if I treat you for indigestion, you'll die of indigestion. Now, do you want me to help you or not, Ethel? I'll feel a lot better if you just stop screaming at me and tell me that you love me. I knew you weren't sick. Tell me you love me, Caesar. I love you. How much do you love me, Caesar? How much do you need? Now, Caesar, Easter Sunday's coming up. It's only two days away, and I haven't got a new hat. What happened to the hat you bought last Easter? It's in a box, in the dresser, but it's all worn out. Well, where the box? You can't be squandering my money on Easter hat. Please, Caesar, just this once. I saw a wonderful hat with a reversible brim that can be turned up or down. How much is it? Sixty dollars. Turn it down. Turn it down? Turn it down? I turn down everything because you're always looking for a a bargain. When you married me, you didn't get any bargain. Well, well, I know that. You know what I mean. You only like the kind of woman who would pass up a mink coat for a cheap fur. Well, what's wrong with buying a cheap fur? Nothing. Would you like to see the one I bought, dear? What? It's a dyed rabbit choker. It only costs $90. $90 for a dead rabbit? Don't get upset, Caesar. Ethel, how can you squander my money like that? I deny myself everything. Last week I had all my teeth pulled out so I could save some money on eating. I've been sewing collars on your old bloomers and wearing them for shirts. I haven't even got a fucking pair of pants. Yesterday, I hung a fucking whisk broom from your plaid skirt and went to work dressed as a Scotsman. And she spends $90 for an Easter rabbit. All right. All right, I'll take it back. I never knew you could be so mean. Oh, take it back. I wish my poor granddaddy was still alive. He'd never let you treat me like this. All of a sudden, she's got a granddaddy. I never heard you mention him before. He was the best friend I ever had. I took his advice on everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have settled a lot of our problems. I bet he'd tell you to let me keep that choker. How do you know? Because I know. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. Suppose he isn't in heaven. Well, then you can ask him. Good night, Ethel. Good night, Caesar. Caesar.